Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32, the Internet of Things, Virtual Private Servers, MQTT or Message Queue, Telemetry, Transport and how to put this all together and also store your data in a cloud data store. First, start with the simplest example. The MQTT protocol is run on a ESP32 sensor and publish all the data to an MQTT broker. And this could be a MQTT broker in a cloud, maybe like Cloud MQT or some kind of mosquito server. And preferable, all your connections are done over TI or SSL and should be encrypted the whole way to the cloud server. And as long as no one is listening to the MQTT broker, all the data are immediately discarded after received by the MQTT broker. So if we want to do something meaningful with our data, we have to introduce another server. And for my purpose, I use a virtual private server and I run on this server in small Python script that is subscribed to the MQTT broker and listen for the incoming messages. Then I also set up some software that stores the data and for my purpose I use MySQL or MariaDB to store the data that are received by the Python script and that Python script just insert all received messages into a table into the database. And now we can connect a device to analyze all the received data and also do some real-time messaging and just subscribe to our message broker. And sure, we can also get a little step further and also introduce an ESP32 as an actor and also steer the actor just from our mobile device or client. So we have the whole picture with all the IoT devices and they can react, steer and all the data can also after a while be analyzed or analyzed by a script and then do some kind of machine learned steering. For my virtual private server I use the Google Cloud platform and I'm just using the free trial. So I have one year free in quote marks virtual private server for my purpose. So after I create a new compute engine and I can just create a very big one but I'm just using the smallest compute engine that's possible and I just set up in my region my compute engine and I have an IP address and an SSH connection to my virtual private server and this is just a Debian installation with Linux. And analoglamp.com offers some discount coupons. If you want to get some discount check out in the description how to send an email with some keywords to analoglamp.com and get your coupon. So I I can just connect via a browser or an SSH client to the server and just install all the needed packages. And if you want to know what packages I've installed, just read the description and there's all the detailed instruction how to set up the MySQL MariaDB Python and MQTT packages and pip. And after we installed all the packages, we can just connect to our database and I just type MySQL minus user and I already created a user. And also you can see this in the description. And I've created an MQTT SQL and I just type in my password. So I'm connected and I can show what databases we have installed. If we type this correct. So I've created an ESP32 IoT MQTT store and we can 
connect to this database just by typing use and the name of the database. So like this and then we can show the tables. There's just one table and I've already played with this table so we can select all data from this table MQTT store. Yes, we also have to type in from so and we can also describe this table describe and then the table name MQTT store and we have just one ID an automatic auto increment field that we don't insert into the database it's just an automated incremented field and all we insert into the database is the MQTT topic that is received by the by the small Python script the message that we receive and also automatically we also set a timestamp for our data to analyze when the message is received or sent out by our sensor and this is just the small Python script I use I do some includes how to use SSL system library MySQL and so on and then we just introduce our connection to our MQTT broker and for this purpose I just use cloud MQTT with the port I use and the certificates I use and the transport protocol is TCP in my case and I use the TLS port for the connection and then I connect to my local database and this is just an example. I use this that database user, this database password, and this is the name of the already shown database. And this is the insert statement, SQL statement that is used. We just insert the topic and the message and all the other fields are stored automatically. And this is how we connect to our MQTT broker with an authentication. And this is the username and this is the password just for an example. This uses all the predefined variables. And after we receive a topic and a payload or an MQTT message, then we store it to a small array. And the array is used to execute the insert statement and store also this two variables with the topic and the payload from the MQTT message. And then, then we store our message number and do a commit to our database and just print some debug messages on the screen. And then the whole loop is done again and again and again until we press the interrupt key on the keyboard. And here in this window, I can start the small Python script on my virtual private server. And in the background, you see all the published MQTT messages. This is just a demo MQTT publishing service. And on our virtual private server, we can see that whenever a message is sent out by the demo publisher then we receive the message in our small python script and here on the third terminal window we can connect to our mysql database with our user mqtt sql and our password then we can connect to our database and select our data table mqtt door and we can see we publish our data, our messages, MQTT messages. We receive them by our Python script and they are also stored in the database. So I wait just for the next messages and then I show you that we also have our message stored in the database. So we have received the message 260 and as you see there's no message now on our screen and I do the select again and now our message is displayed in the database. Thanks for watching today. I hope you find this useful and interesting or even learn something. You can give me some comments or a thumbs up. Share this video. I wish you a nice day. See you next time and bye bye.